Today was a strange day. It was another long day at the office. Piles of paperwork stood a mile high on my desk, and it had taken me hours to even make a dent in it. I couldn't have been more relieved when the clock finally hit 5pm. I hightailed it out of there and went on my way. Pulling into the driveway, I could not help but admire what stood before me. A gorgeous, two-story home layered with the highest quality brick. A 500 square foot red cedar deck out back. The luxurious pool below it and a hot tub to boot. The absolutely perfectly symmetrical yard with lush green grass. A massive wine cellar in the basement. My wife and I, we had slaved away working multiple jobs each to save up for this place. Seeing the response to our offer, it had brought tears to our eyes. This was truly our dream home. As I sat in the driveway, someone else pulled up right beside me. I turned my head to see what was going on. There was a man in the car. He could not have been more than 40. His dark hair was receding and he had thin eyes. He looked very tall, likely well over six feet, and pale. He was also eerily thin. And he was staring at me. The discomfort I felt was instant. You know how there are some people you look at and they immediately give you heebie-jeebies. That was this guy. I pulled forward a little. He did the same. I went a bit further. So did he. That wasn't working. I decided I'd try to play it cool now. I turned to him, smiling, and I waved. The blank expression on his face did not flinch. I don't think he even blinked. I quickly turned my head away from him, and I started looking forward again. It didn't matter. I could still feel his gaze. I think you all know that paranoid feeling of being watched. Well, I was being watched, and that paranoid feeling, it had increased tenfold. I quickly hit the lock button on my car, just in case he tried to do something. Okay, maybe if I waited it out, he'd leave me alone. I kept my vision straight ahead and I waited. 30 seconds passed. A minute passed. Two minutes passed. Four minutes passed. His car had not moved. He hadn't left. Sweat began to trickle down my brow. If he's messing with me, He's doing a really good job. I'm freaked the hell out. Was he going to try to hurt me? This wasn't working. I pretended that I'd just gotten a phone call, and I picked it up. I mocked having a conversation, and I made exaggerated movements to make it seem like I'd forgotten all about him. I wanted him to believe that I was on an all-important call while nervously looking into my periphery the entire time. He was still there. Okay, now what? I racked my brain for an answer. Maybe, just maybe, he was as uncomfortable as I was. Maybe he had the same idea as me and he was pretending to take a call now or something. Despite every instinct I had begging me not to, I turned my head and I looked back in his direction. He was still staring at me. 
it actually felt more like he was staring through me. Like he was peering right into my soul. I could feel the goosebumps across my body en masse. Those eyes of his, they just wouldn't look away. I didn't know what to do. Should I honk? Should I give him the finger? Should I threaten him? What if he was armed? Before I could do anything, I saw him reach for the door handle. Our eyes narrowed in on each other. He slowly opened the driver's side door, about an inch. He unbuckled his seatbelt. Our eye contact did not break. He slowly, methodically, began his exit from the vehicle. Shit. He was going to come for me. I knew it. This has gone on far too long to be a joke. He's going to try to hurt me. My breathing, it became more erratic. My body began trembling. I could feel sweat course down my body. My wet palms tightened around my keys. If he makes a move, I'll strike him with these. Our eyes still had not broken contact. His door was wide open now. But instead of coming for me, he made a mad dash away from me, towards the door inside the garage that led into the house. Oh no you don't. Instinct completely took over, and before I knew what was happening, I had unlocked my door and beelined towards the house. He'd had a head start, but I was in better shape and I started to catch up quite quickly. He beat me to the door and he tried to slam it on me. I was able to get in there just in the nick of time and stop it from completely closing. I don't know what this guy's intentions for me were, but they were not good. We fought hard to win the battle for the door. He tried with all his might to keep me out. I did the same to keep that from happening. Suddenly, all the resistance I felt was gone and I fell forward, toppling to the floor inside the house. I lifted my head. The man was gone. Where did he go? I quickly got up and I slowly moved forward. I didn't see him anywhere. It was too late to turn back now. Luckily, I knew every inch of this house like the back of my hand. There were only a few spots he could be. I ventured further into the house and I reached the edge of the kitchen. My eyes quickly surveying my surroundings and my head on a swivel. I saw the knife rack over by the sink. Shit. There were two empty slots. Thankfully, it wasn't empty though. I tiptoed my way over, each step perfectly soundless. I heard the creak of a door, and I quickly turned. The man rushed out at me from the pantry, swinging his knives at me wildly. Who the hell are you? I was able to dodge the first swing. I nearly dodged the second, but it grazed me, creating what I imagine looked like a slanted line of blood right across my face. I bolted towards the living room, and he followed in pursuit. I looked around for anything I could use to protect myself. There was the fireplace, and the fire was burning. Perfect. I'd grab a fire poker. Where are they? A massive amount of force struck me in the back, and I toppled over right in front of the fireplace. I quickly shifted from back to front to see my assailant. He swung down hard with his right. I narrowly avoided the blade, and it lodged into the wooden floor. I was not so lucky the second time. 
The next blade, it plunged through my right hand and I screamed in agony. Tears immediately burst out of my eyes and my vision went blurry. I had never felt such pain in my entire life, but I needed to try to remain calm. While my hand was now punctured with his knife, that also meant he was out of weapons. That was when I was met with a blunt force to the side of my head. The water in my eyes had already made it difficult to see. Now, things had gotten fuzzy. I was seeing stars too. The man bent over me and struck me over and over and over. I knew, somewhere, my face had been busted open because I could feel the warm trickle of blood flow from my temple right down past my cheek. I was fading. I couldn't take much more of this before I'd be out for good. I pulled the only card I had left and I kicked him in the nuts. He collapsed and I yanked the knife out of my hand. I swung at him with everything I had only to miss. Somehow, he was already back to his feet. I swung again, but he was able to break my grip of it and the knife went flying. At this point I tackled him and he fell back into the brick surrounding the fireplace on the left. The photos that had been mounted above us fell and glass shattered everywhere. I grabbed a hold of the biggest piece of glass I could find and I pierced his leg. He let out a guttural howl and then, with every ounce of energy I had left in my body, I forced his body right, right into the fire. His body struggled and contorted unnaturally as his head was burned to something beyond recognition. Finally, his motions ceased. I leaned back, exhausted. We'd made a hell of a mess. This certainly would not be easy to explain. I gently grabbed one of the photos that had fallen, brushing off the broken glass, and I took a look at it. I'll give this guy credit for one thing. He does have a beautiful family.